If you've taken an intro to psych course, you've probably heard about Pavlov. Pavlov was the scientist who was studying a dog's digestion when he realized that the dog started salivating the moment he walked into the room, whether he had started to feed them or not. The dogs had learned Pavlov equals food. This is associative learning or classical conditioning. The dogs had learned to associate Pavlov and later the bell he would ring with getting food and they responded accordingly. This type of learning happens all the time, so often that we have names for all the different pieces of the puzzles. The food in this case is an example of an unconditioned stimulus, sometimes abbreviated US. It's an unconditioned stimulus because the dogs didn't need to learn anything about food to start salivating over it. They did that naturally. The response that's produced to an unconditioned stimulus is called the unconditioned response. Food is also an unconditioned stimulus for humans. No one needs to teach our mouths to water when a delicious meal is placed in front of us. But what about Pavlov? In this case, we would call him the conditioned stimulus because the dogs had learned to associate him with the unconditioned stimulus, which is food, and they started salivating. Salivating in this case would be the conditioned response. The dogs wouldn't have salivated to Pavlov had he not become associated with food. The conditioned response in this case is the same as the unconditioned response. So the response to seeing Pavlov is the same as the response that the animals had to getting the food. But it doesn't have to be the same, and sometimes it's different. Money is a good example of a conditioned stimulus for people. By itself, it's just little pieces of paper. They're not that exciting. But it's because we've learned to associate those little pieces of paper with getting things that we want, that now when we get those pieces of paper or those numbers in our bank account, we might feel excited or happy, or we might start thinking about the things that we might be able to do. Well, what does this have to do with anxiety? Well, this is one way that anxiety disorders can develop. If you've ever been in a scary car accident, you have a sense of what I mean. When an adult is driving, if they've been driving for a lot of years, usually getting in a car is no big deal. But if you have a sudden car accident, you might find that the next time you go to get in a car afterward, you start feeling nervous. You might feel like your palms are sweaty or like you're shaking, even though you're pulling out of the same driveway you've pulled out of thousands of times. In this case, the car accident was an unconditioned stimulus, and our unconditioned response was fear. Fear is a natural thing to feel in response to a scary event like a car accident. But the car has become a conditioned stimulus. That's because now when we get in the car, we associate being in the car with that accident. And our conditioned response in this case is also to feel anxious and to feel afraid. Now, we don't need to be aware of our associations for them to have an effect on us. We also don't need to have a conditioning experience to develop a phobia or a fear. In fact, most fears are not linked to a single traumatic experience or even a series of traumatic experiences that a person can identify, but some are. And this is one way that an anxiety disorder can develop. 